drug companies, as you know, um, they have a huge lobby. And uh, the lobby on healthcare is bigger than energy and the military lobby altogether. And uh, you can understand why it is so very difficult for any administration and any politician to make some meaningful changes in the heart of the problem. Um, but financial viability and the cost of drugs is something that really, as a society, we have to face at some point. Unfortunately, there is a natural bias towards expensive cancer treatments because pharmaceutical companies, uh, they are not set up to just try and find an answer. They are set up to make money. So ultimately, the drugs that will be researched with urgency are the ones that have the ability to make a lot of profit. Those are the ones that get invested in. And there was a, I believe, a document that Goldman Sachs had sent out that was discovered by CNBC uh, last year that, that explicitly asked this question, you know, is curing cancer profitable as a long-term business model? Curing cancer is a lot less profitable than having patients who need repeat treatments. Um, that makes a lot more money for a pharmaceutical company than a, than a cure. Would there be a uh, financial disincentive to cure cancer? Of course. I mean, it's huge business, huge business. If we can come up with a way to manage your cancer so you can live indefinitely as long as you take the drug, then that's really a win-win for everybody, right? It's a win for pharmaceutical industry because they have to keep supplying the drug indefinitely, and it's a win for the patient because they stay alive. This is real. Cancer care is real, and it costs a lot of money. And a lot of people go bankrupt trying to deal with cancer, trying to fight cancer. In this country, there are too many stakeholders trying to get a hand in the pot. The only two stakeholders that that matter, in my opinion, are the patient and the physician. But what ends up happening is they're the two that have the least control. So how is that fair um, to the victim of the cancer? The Food and Drug Administration, which approves drugs, doesn't approve it based on costs. It approves it based on its efficacy, its benefit. New Day Foundation is a local nonprofit organization, Michigan-based. We work with families who are struggling with something called financial toxicity. What we do is we work with them to offset the financial burden of cancer. Financial toxicity is definitely not a new problem. It's something that is being widely recognized in the media and it's being recognized globally. Financial toxicity does not discriminate. It's often insured people who are dealing with the problem of financial toxicity. And it's unexpected because people think cancer is a disease I have to beat physically, but they never for one moment think financially. It will send any family uh, towards the direction of poverty. And so that is an issue. And it's a problem and it's ongoing and it's getting worse. I mean, I think people are getting pinched more than they were even 10 years ago. Everybody thinks you're diagnosed, you go to the doctor, you run into the hospital, you get all the tests you want, but it's not that simple. To get a test, to get a scan, there's referrals, and then you kind of get the call from the hospital that says, just want to review financially the cost here. And that, I mean, there's no question you're going to get the test or you're going to try to get the test. And then you try to figure out the financial aspect of it later. And so even when you're through a diagnosis, you are not through with the toxic nature financially. So let's say you make it through cancer, which is an extremely, extremely difficult thing to do in the first place. So you get through all the emotional and physical and the oncological aspects of that. You still have a 20% copay generally. And with my bone marrow transplant and leading up to it and the hospitalization and the length of the hospitalization, it was in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. It is a burden that can literally 
destroy a family. It can literally impact a treatment outcome and it can cost someone their life. I think that our current system of paying for drugs is not ideal. Other countries, they have a council that has to approve drugs and not only does benefit play a role in this, it's cost. We pay more than any other country in the world does for drugs. The same drugs. You can get the same, I mean, we are very close to Canada here in, in uh, Southeast Michigan, and we can get the same drugs often for a tenth of the price in Canada that you can get them for here in the U.S. In Detroit, people give up their electricity bill to try and pay for treatments. Patients have to decide between their heating bill or paying for a copay to see the doctor, and they'll choose a doctor every single time. This is duck. This is really f***ed up, and it can't continue. And in the healthcare, I look at other models around the world, and I just read this long article on, on why Europeans don't uh, have to pay enormous medical bills. And the, and the, uh, the construct there is, is just so much more disciplined, humane, well thought out, not not for for profit, not not greedy, but everybody does okay, including the healthcare companies. The number of patients that can afford the type of surgery that I have with the bills that they get are very few. And as a medical care provider, I never knew that until my patient brought in the bill from her hospitalization which came in at 118,000. And I was only one part of the treatment. Our oath was that we would help people and we're being bottlenecked by the high cost of medical care. That makes it extremely difficult to get patients the best care in a timely fashion to help them try and beat their cancer.